Hello, I'm Sheldon Axler, the author of Linear Algebra Done Right. This video discusses part three of the section of the book titled Generalized Eigenvectors and Nilpotent Operators. This video focuses on nilpotent operators. An operator is called nilpotent if some power of it equals zero. Let's look at two examples. For our first example, consider the operator n on f4 defined as you see here. This operator is nilpotent because if we square it, we get the zero operator. For our second example, consider the vector space p sub m of r. That's the vector space of polynomials with real coefficients and degree less than or equal to m. On that vector space, consider the operation of differentiation. So a polynomial p goes to its derivative p prime. If you do that m plus one times, you get zero because we're only working with polynomials of degree less than or equal to m. In other words, this operator raised to the m plus first power is equal to zero, thus it is a nilpotent operator. Our next result states that if n is a nilpotent operator on v, then n raised to the power dimension v is equal to the zero operator. The reason this is true is that being nilpotent means n to some power is equal to zero. Another way to phrase that is that the null space of n to some power is the whole vector space v. But we've seen previously that the null space doesn't get any bigger than raising the operator to the power the dimension of the vector space. That gives the result shown here. Our next result states that if n is a nilpotent operator on v, then there's a basis of v with respect to which the matrix of n is an upper triangular matrix with zeros along the diagonal. Remember that upper triangular means all the entries below the diagonal are zero. So in this case, we have all the entries below and on the diagonal are zero. You should pause the video and prove to yourself that if n is nilpotent, then zero is the only eigenvalue of n. Recall also that if we have any operator and a basis with respect to which the matrix of that operator is upper triangular, then the entries on the diagonal of that matrix are precisely the eigenvalues of the operator. Because the only eigenvalue of a nilpotent matrix is zero, the result shown here follows immediately from our result earlier that if we have a complex vector space, there's some matrix with respect to which the operator has an upper triangular matrix. Thus, this result is new only in the case when the scalar field is the field of real numbers. However, the proof we're about to give works for both real and complex vector spaces. And even in the case of complex vector spaces, where we already know this theorem, this proof is somewhat easier than our earlier proof, and it gives some additional insight. Thus, let's look at the proof of this result. We get started by first choosing a basis of the null space of n. The null space of n is contained in the null space of n squared, so extend that basis to a basis of the null space of n squared. The null space of n squared is contained in the null space of n cubed, so extend our previous basis to a basis of the null space of n cubed. Continue in this fashion, eventually getting a basis of v, and that happens because the null space of n to the dimension of v is the whole space v. Now let's think about the matrix of n with respect to the basis we've just chosen. The first column of n, and perhaps additional columns at the beginning, consists of all zeros, because those first basis vectors are elements of the null space of n, and thus n applied to each of those vectors gives zero. Now the next group of columns comes from basis vectors in n squared. If we apply n to a vector in the null space of n squared, we get a vector in the null space of n. Thus we get a vector that's a linear combination of the previous basis vectors. That means that all the non-zero entries in these columns corresponding to basis vectors in the null space of n squared lie above the diagonal. Now we move on to the basis vectors in the null space of n cubed. When we apply n to any such vector, we get a vector in the null space of n squared. 
Thus we get a vector that's a linear combination of the previous vectors. This means that the only non-zero entries in the matrix corresponding to those columns lie above the diagonal. We continue in this fashion to complete the proof. You should pause the video and think about this proof. It's not that hard, but it does require a bit of thought to make sure that you understand it well. Let's end this video with a painting of Hypatia, the Egyptian mathematician and philosopher who lived from about 355 to 415. This painting was made around 1900, so this does not represent an accurate depiction of her. You may want to read more about Hypatia on the web. This concludes part three of the video on generalized eigenvectors and nilpotent operators. If you see a small picture of a slide in the upper left corner of this slide, then you can click on it to get to the next video. If you see a small picture of part of the cover of linear algebra done right in the upper right corner of this slide, then you can click on it to get to the book's website.